terms of 5G deployment, two main methodologies exist. Now, you may have heard of non-standalone 5G deployment and standalone 5G deployment. Now, there is a big difference between these two methodologies. And you can see that from 2018 onwards, the earliest deployments of 5G were based on non-standalone operation because ultimately, this is the easiest way 5G can be brought to market by the mobile service provider. But the problem is it only really delivers enhanced mobile broadband, particularly to the consumer market. So to really fulfill the goals of 5G, to deliver ultra reliable and low latency communication, and also support massive machine type communication, we really need a standalone 5G deployment, which includes the deployment of the full end-to-end -end 5G network. And that started to happen back in 2020. It's worth considering, though, the timeline for deployment. And I guess this trajectory is going to ultimately follow, hopefully for the 3GPP, the standards body behind 5G, hopefully follow 4G. So ultimately, there's approximately 800 mobile service providers around the globe today. So we're really aiming for that, but what we need to remember is the prevalence of private 5G as well. So although there are 800 mobile service providers, then there could be many, many more actual 5G deployments that are encountered. And the overall growth is obviously going to be similar to LTE, if not shifted a number of years. So when you hear the term non-standalone 5G, what exactly does it mean? What does the network architecture actually look like? Well, you can see to deploy a non-standalone 5G network, which is also abbreviated to NSA, by the way, we actually start with a 4G network and what we do with our 4G network is we add the 5G radio element only. So we're still using the 4G core network and that has all kinds of implications on things like security and control. Ultimately, we're still using LTE or 4G methodologies for that. Now, our device is able to benefit from two simultaneous radio connections so it can be using 4G, and it primarily will be still a 4G device, but when available, that device will simultaneously use 5G as well for data transfer. Now we call this a non-standalone deployment because that 5G radio network, it's called a GNB by the way, but that 5G radio network is entirely controlled by the 4G E node B or the 4G radio network. So it's ultimately the 4G radio network that decides whether or not the device can actually use 5G as well. The 5G radio network does not get its control from the core network. It gets its control from the 4G radio network and hence it is a non-standalone deployment. It cannot stand alone. It needs to be based on ultimately getting control from the 4G radio network. As such, the 5G radio network's main responsibility is really the handling of user data. Now, what exactly is that user data? Well, we can see from the next diagram how user data is transferred around the network in a non-standalone scenario. So voice services is a classic use case. We need to consider how voice over LTE, Volte, is actually handled because there's a large number of 4G providers that are out there today that do run voice over LTE services. And as you can see from the diagram, Volte traffic stays exclusively on 4G. So we're not going to be delivering any kind of voice services using our 5G part of the network. So what do we use 5G for? Well, clearly 
the answer is going to be internet traffic. And as you can see, internet traffic will get delivered to the 5G RAN node. Some of it will be actually delivered to the device using 5G, but you can see our 5G radio network also splitting some of that internet data and exchanging it with the 4G radio network as well to allow that data to be exchanged over 4G also. So when we talk about non-standalone deployment of 5G, it is very, very much based on 4G, and it's only really internet data that tends to be delivered using the 5G and 4G radio network simultaneously. Essentially, to deliver the full 5G experience, you really need to deploy a standalone 5G network. And when we talk about a standalone 5G network, we look at the end-to-end -end network being 5G in its entirety. So 4G essentially isn't involved here. So if you look, you can see that a device, it's actually known as a user equipment to give it its full title. But an end device is going to be connecting to a data network of some description. So that data network, the classic example is the internet. But it could also be data networks related to cellular IoT or even voice services. Collectively, the end-to-end -end 5G network is known as the 5G system. And it's made up of three main components. Firstly, we've got the actual radio link. And the radio link is termed new radio. So you can see this sits between the device and the radio access network. And it's absolutely critical for supporting our high data throughput and as appropriate, low latency. Now the new radio is different to all of the radio technologies that have come before it. The next element of the system is the NG-RAN, the next generation radio access network. So the key responsibilities of the NG-RAN, which as you can see is the whole network of radio towers and 5G cells, the key responsibilities here are obviously to support a mobile network. As you move around whatever geographical location you might be in, you always need to be in 5G coverage. So our radio access network is designed to support device mobility. Now, also involved with that is obviously security. We need to make sure that the connection between the device and the radio access network is secure as it possibly can be. And then finally, we've got the 5G core network. So this also needs to be deployed as part of a standalone deployment. It's based on a cloud infrastructure and it's the core network that really provides control to the device itself, but also control to the radio access network as well. So the GNBs, which you find in the radio access network, the new radio node Bs as they are called, these platforms get their control directly from that core network, hence they stand alone.